previously on the Crazy Blind Dude channel. Hi, bot. A lightsaber. But more next time. Hi, Misha here. And yeah, it's time to talk about my most recent ridiculous purchase. A lightsaber. And I'm going to share with you what I've learned about the lightsaber community because of course in this day and time everything has a community and would you believe it there's infighting and divisiveness and all that stuff just like every other community it seems like at the same time there are people in it that seem to be just in it for fun and enjoyment and don't take it too seriously I'll let you guess which side I tend to fall on. Well, let's get into it, both in-universe, canon, Star Wars, and the real world that we, unfortunately, sometimes live in. We begin here with this one. Kind of a generic, modern lightsaber. And I picked it in kind of a gold because of the... Jedi counseling cannon, sometimes electroplated, electrum, their sabers. And this is the Zeta Zeta hilt from Imperial Workshop, which is a Chinese because it's all Chinese made it's for, for this money. First off, though, why I didn't just go with the Hasbro Black Series? I, I honestly did. I handled them. And they definitely feel a lot better than the lightsaber toys that were around when I was a kid or even a young adult. But they they do have that toy element and they are fixed. In that I mean they have a certain sound font for sound series. They do have two buttons which is kind of neat. A lot of them you have to pull out batteries even put in AA batteries or whatever. Some newer ones are actually rechargeable. But, and even the older ones don't even have removable blades, which is definitely a deal breaker for me. But they definitely have that kind of more toyish replica cosplay thing going on. Whereas this series, the kind of LGT or TXQ, any of that the higher end profi ones they are more of a computer and a alloy chassis not especially heavy but not light depending on the one this one's about a foot long but not very wide speaker in the back a cover tech wheel here single button as most all are today recharge port summer uh, usb-c and the business end don't be afraid now there are some advantages to the hasbro at least i presume because they are designed more as a toy a display they do feel thicker and chunkier but they also probably are going to last longer. This basically has a computer inside, or at least a computer board, which means chips will die and wires will get pulled out. So it's one of those things there will be maintenance just as with any computer. On the other hand, what you get seems worth it, and the price at least for the cheaper ones like this, is the same or even a little bit less than the Black Series. We'll see how it goes. And, like any electronics, it will be repairable. Well, where to begin? What have I learned? Well, I guess we'll just dive in, won't we? In the Star Wars universe, of course, this is the weapon of a Jedi, primarily, although the Sith use them and a handful of others but in the hands of a Jedi it's meant to be of a limited power and defense not 
offensive projection. The Sith use them, but often they feel like they've grown past them. In universe, there's a power cell, various electronics to turn that plasma in out, and a focusing crystal, crystal, excuse me, kyber crystal inside. But since each one is individually made, they uh, they do vary quite a bit. So there's no really wrong or right lightsaber because each one's unique. So if you even get a generic hilt like this, it could be someone's. Who knows? Of course, in the real world, the story is a little more interesting. Of course, the whole lightsaber or laser sword concept was very unique for Star Wars in 1977. But it began just as a sword. The whole idea, since it was meant to be a fantasy slash historical based type thing, serial based thing, everyone was to use swords, kind of uh, Middle Ages style. Kind of reminds me of, of Dune, which, uh, to be fair, inspired George Lucas quite a bit. Everyone talks about a lot of Japanese influence he had. Absolutely true. But there's a lot of commonalities with Frank Herbert's Dune as well, including the use of blades. So in the very get-go, everyone was to use these. It's actually why Stormtrooper uniforms have what we call the thermal detonator pouch on their back. That was meant to be a socket for one of these guys. That's why it's about the size it is. But... First, they decided to make this a laser sword, letter lightsaber name, and then they started to make it for the Jedi and Sith. And yeah, the Sith name was used all the way back in the 70s, even if it didn't make it on screen until the 90s. A lot of stuff was in books and comics beforehand. And it evolved from there to the real world here. We have our hilt and... Like I said, single button control, which is actually one reason we'll get into later why this is actually good for me. You might be wondering why in the world I need something that's basically a light stick. Well, we'll get to that. But in here we have pins, and in this one they're very deeply buried for an LED strip. And we have basically two sizes. Let me set you down for just a second so I can grab without fail. Now the links can come in several. I think the shortest stuff seems 28 or 26, but 36 is the standard, and that actually corresponds about three foot to how long the beams are in the show, in the movies. But we have two pretty common diameters, 7 eighths inch and 1 inch. The one inch is obviously thicker, but there are benefits to the seven eighths, including simply being a lighter blade, because there's a decent amount going on in here. Multiple strips, hundreds of LEDs, a little bit of insulation, and of course there's different ones because this is an interchangeable part. It's almost a disposable part. And to install, and again the Seven eighths is not really meant for this one. This is an inch hilt. You just use an Allen key, which is standard across all these. This one has two screw holes to mount it. But really, a trick that I read on the forums and a couple of people have put it on YouTube, I'll use one. And it actually surprisingly works, at least on this one, because of how deep it is. Well, let's mount the blade. You can see just how deeply this sits into the hilt, which is good. And uh, even with just the one screw, it fits quite tightly. Now these can back out and will. And coming from the gun world, I can think of a couple of better systems. There's, there's one style we use on some gun barrels where you still have a set screw but it actually tensions a ring that squeezes 360 degrees. I think that would be better. Also, these have kind of a plastic film on the outside, and so your screws will kind of bite into it a bit, marring it, but that's inside, so you're not really going to notice it. 
Again, though, I'm not going to correct for what these cost and what they do. This one here with the blade and accessories is about 200 bucks. That might sound expensive, but I haven't turned it on yet. Let's do that. With this one, you know it's on when there's a red light. It also lets you know. You can push the button. And like you saw on my teaser video there. And you can hold it down and turn it off. But that's no fun. We do live in the modern era, so we have motion controls. But we're just sitting here at the table. So happens that my cousin and cousin slash nephew were here this weekend, and about five minutes after they get in the door, they asked to see this. So I put it in their hands. Twist my hand right? Okay. <laughs> no. That easy? <laughs> All makes noises? Dude. Noises. Mm. Holy cow. No way. <laughs> These have came a long way. Let me see it. Okay, I just twisted it off. Yeah. No. Dude, I am truly unbelievably impressed right now. No fucking way. Look at it. It literally lights up just like in the movie. Look at that. Dude. Yeah, that's too cool. All right, I want to play now. No, look at that. Okay, coming on. Come on. Whoa. All right, your turn. Dude. Yeah, it feels badass. We, so we, we determined he is my... Second cousin, the internet says nephew. We think that's bullshit. It, it's Chinese propaganda. It is Chinese propaganda. Is, what would you call this? What? This, this lightsaber. Chinese. Because okay. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> you think America can make something like that now? No, not this Hell one. No. Hell and, no. And that's the cheap one. Let me see it again. <sighs> Don't hand it to him that way. Yeah, yeah, he just he's, lost he's, his damn hand. Yeah, you are truly a Luke. <laughs> Pulled a Luke on us. Okay. No it way. It changes colors. <laughs> I thought it was only blue. So you're going straight from Jedi to uh, what's his name? Rebel. Yeah. Dude, I feel like, dude, can you imagine if he had this as like a four-year-old? Yeah. Or, or like a or like a tw a thirty-three-year-old. <laughs> it's even better because now if I break it, I can buy another one. <laughs> when I was a little kid. You got the cheap, shitty ones at Toys R Us for. Fourteen ninety nine, and they had the mini ones. Always got shafted with the mini, mini ones. ones. I always got the mini one. <laughs> mini one? Yes. You it, were was never, it was you, never you, the full you, size you one. You were a mini kid. No, I wasn't. I was bigger than both my older brothers. You were mini in their hearts. Dude, I got to go away. You got to fucking slash my head off. Dude. Oh my god. <laughs> I want to go outside. Dude. I wonder what it looks like in the night time. You gotta get a cloak now. Yeah, this is badass. Back to here with me. And there's a few different ways you can change the sound. But the easiest way is just to hold down the button. Literally a middle age theme. Idol. Serenity. The champion. Mm hmm. So yeah, quite a bit in the way of sounds and
colors, including this one. I think that's it. Turn around. Oh, yeah. It's raining men. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. God. Internet is about to kill me if this video ever goes viral. Yeah, you're, you're done. This we're, was not what we planned to do today, but we're but, going through the bar. But, but it but it works. I'm putting on my unicorn track suit. Rainbow Oh, it almost even had a little bit of a little bit of <laughs> Alright. Who's the Jedi that likes the red makeup? Yeah. I don't know, but they're in the band kiss. <laughs> to be fair, Peter Chris could rock. <laughs> so they were kind of, they were kind of, you know. Dude, Paul uh, Stanley pulled a red lipstick. Come on now, give him that. Uh, I mean, when your front man's demon, yeah, you can get away with it. And to think parents thought that was evil. Yeah, that happened. I am definitely going to show his daughter. Oh yes, that man is old enough to reproduce and has a daughter that will be teenager quite soon. But that's kind of the effect these seem to have on people. Here's Ahsoka's. And if you're kind of thinking that wasn't on the Zeta from Imperial Workshop originally, you are correct. I've actually the champion. customized this. This is supposedly Windu. Because like I said, these are programmable. And actually quite easily so. And that's one of the things that actually makes this attractive to me. It's also something that introduces where errors can and will happen. So back here, while these chassis are interchangeable and use a lot of the same screws, they are different. This one comes apart quite easily, which is one of the benefits. This just unscrews, and here we have access to the SIM card, and that's where you can program it. It's actually quite simple. But before you do that, you need to pull out your battery. This is a lithium ion type because modern times. And to recharge this one, that's what this port is up here. It just comes with a interface plug for a USB powered port. Plug it in, charge your battery. You don't need to remove it. If you want to take out your SD card, they always warn you to pull your battery out first because essentially this is always on even when it's off there's still current flowing and that can corrupt the system kind of like pulling out a USB or an SD card from your computer when it's still being read by the system it's pretty neat though because inside it uses simple wave files and simple folders for each font and then there's a config file with uh, basically just text, you know, ones and zeros to do different things for the motion control. Set you set times in milliseconds, and you can set special features, special you know, effects for certain blades. Now, the Xeno Pixel here, as this is, isn't as customizable as Profi, which is just completely controllable. But what I've noticed. When it comes to sound, it's the same. Where the difference is, is really customizing your blade with the Profi, the kind of highest end. You can program every LED to every color to do everything. With this, you can have configs that the manufacturer put into the motherboard, but you can only really change the sound and just adjust the color. In a sense, I can't see the color to adjust it anyway. I saw no reason to do that. Otherwise, they seem about the same. But I can adjust the sound. And that's why I actually have this one set up as kind of a uh, hero's saber. If you notice some of the fonts, they were all kind of that. When it came in, it had a mixture. But I wanted it to be 
set up as more of a Jedi style. So blues and greens, some yellows. What about the Sith? Well, that's kind of why I have this blade here. For a Sith Saber, I could not help but pick up Darth Sidious's Palpatines. For one thing, it's a lot smaller, which is, I think, neat. Goes to show you just how compact they can uh, they can make these. It's roughly about eight inches, but it uses the same soundboard, and I'm sure I'm getting fingerprints all over it. I'm sure I don't care. It's a sleeker thing, and it's definitely meant to be a one-handed dealio. And this uses this slimmer blade here. And it actually uses, sorry, my mic cord's getting in the way, three screws, which is interesting. At first I thought that's silly because they're kind of all on one side, but it actually holds in quite well. Take a look. So they give you two lengths of screw. I like to put the longer in the middle and the shorter ones on the sides because the middle one's mostly going to support it. But it, I actually like this arrangement quite well because the pressure is all kind of from one side, so it pushes up against, and it does really well. Sometimes these thinner blades, because they are lighter, don't wiggle as much too. Again, you can get different lengths. This is the 36 because it's the Sidious Saber. You can put different ones in. This button over here is a dummy. This button over here is uh, what uses it. And this is actually from a different brand, Art Sabers, which is basically still LGT. Although the controls are a little different, and I don't know exactly why. This seems to have the standard controls for most of the LGTs. It's actually this one that's the oddball. A few differences I've noted. Most of your LGTs just have sound that's either mute, high, or low. The Imperial Workshops, and as far as I know, just them, are actually mute, and then 2 through 10, with 10 being max. The also, the way you change colors and some other stuff is different. On the other hand, with these, you're kind of limited in your settings, unless you pull out your SD card, whereas these you can change on the fly. And I went with this for a very simple reason. These are not licensed by Lucasfilm, Disney. So most manufacturers don't say what they are on their website. They'll give it a name, just kind of generic. But then the pictures look like what it is. Well, I can't see the pictures. I wanted to get the Sidious one. And very few websites just say, hey, this is his. This actually said Emperor's Saber. Uh, so it was the easiest one for me to pick from. And um, even though it came from China, it got here very quickly. And uh, their communication with me has been very respectable. And I have no complaints so far. That could change because it's all relatively new, a month old or less for me. But yeah, this is my Sith Saber. I will say using this small little elegant button takes a little bit more. <laughs> well, if we're going to do that, we might as well start with who it should be. This is the Sidious font. I'm noticing I don't think I need to turn up the sensitivity on this one. Could be the thinner blade too, but you can adjust sensitivity way up where it will sneeze and do it. Of course, it's got all kinds of stuff you can do. Notice it tends to work better in your right hand. Still not bad in the left, though. Cyber terror. So that's a thing.
That's what I mean about effects. Um, if you had a profi, you could actually make those, but on this, you can just download them. So you can mute it. And this control is a little different for sound. That's the blade. There we go. And see, we change the pulse on that. You can't do that on the Imperial one except in the config file. One nice thing too is it does save any changes you make, but also nice if you kind of screw up a setting you like, instead of having to manually go reset it, you can just delete the actual config file for that folder, which is handy. That was me, not the blade. I will adjust the uh, sensitivity on this one either, like I said, it's either the smaller blade or the smaller hilt, but uh, it's not bad. But that does kind of lead me into the, like I was talking about, potential errors, because these are computers and they will have glitches. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, but uh, don't panic, just like with any other computer, you know, resetting helps a lot. So, let's go back to my cousin and cousin slash nephew battery might be low yeah the sound went up and you have the dark sword <laughs> yeah that too you should have known wow. <laughs> I don't think you should show the internet this because my inner child is about to come out Just feel that. With the sound going up, it's even better quality and feeling. Like, yeah, I just... I, it's I, weird. I, I like keeping it on low. Oh, yeah. You know, probably save the battery, too. Oh, yeah. I just, you know, right in your face. That, yeah. That. Dude. So I think what happened on that one when they were messing around with it, either something got a little loose because they were messing around, which is oh, fine. This is what these are user for. Or the battery is getting low, and when the battery gets low, things get a little squirrely because power gets more intermittent and voltage drops. It's supposed to be around four, some odd volts up to five, and if it drops below three and a half, it gets a little weird. Here's kind of a cool one. But uh, yeah, these are obviously mostly all going to be red. Put a few other colors on that seemed Sith-like. And you can reasonably knock these against things, but I wouldn't go too crazy. If you do, you can uh, replace the blades for not insane money. Kind of like replacing a LED light bulb. This is the cracked version. And they do move based on how fast you swing. And they also do sing, which I'm not really crazy about that part, but oh well. Of course, you can just pull off the soundtracks if you want. It's just basic wave files. I am definitely going to do a Smashing Pumpkins Blade. Just haven't had a chance yet. This is supposed to be a fire type blade for Kylo. But yeah, there's a. The assassin. I think this is supposed to be Mole. When you get these, they usually have 30 some odd on them, some are even 40. I like to reduce them down. Since you have to manually cycle through them, it gets cumbersome. I found about. 
12 to 20 being as many as I want to handle. But um, these come with 16 gigabyte SD cards. I assume you can put larger ones in. You can get a lot on there if you really, really wanted to. Maybe up to 99. Heck, maybe even 100 more. I don't know if it goes into three digits or not in the filing system. But that would become ridiculous to navigate through. And I would imagine it would start producing some weird errors. Like I said, charging is another one that can cause issues loose blades of course of connectivity loose battery components and again if you pull out the sd card but while still having the battery in it can uh, do things and also of course plugging it in to a charger that's uh, too high of a voltage can just you know do what it does to any electronics cook it sometimes quite literally and spectacularly by the way this one to charge it because of how small it is there's two screws on the bottom. Pull, you know, remove those and the chargers there. And this one is a USB-C. So this is my villain saber. And this one up here is, of course, my kind of prequel saber. I have one more to show you. My Obi-Wan. This is the fanciest one. In fact, in the original Star Wars, it was the most complicated, fanciest saber. And of course, uh, the Skywalker saber was a Graphilex modified, and uh, the Vader saber was actually a similar flash gun modified. This was truly pieced together. You have a faucet end here. You had part of a World War I grenade here. You had part of a Rolls-Royce engine from a English Electric Lightning here. Plus some other bibs and bobs. Even part of a calculator on this strip here. Now this is not a one-to-one -one replica. They don't they pretend like it is. That's fine by me. Not like I can see it anyway. But it is quite a bit bigger. You can also see how much this goes in. Let me line these up here. To the hilt. These are the same length blade. That's the difference. This one is particularly deep. Unfortunately, these skinny necks or narrow neck ones are particularly shallow. And that is one problem I've had with this one. The blade is uh, it's just not in there very deep. And it tends to wiggle around. Now, they do give you a total of four screw holes. I tried using one, two, three, four... And unfortunately, you really do need to use all four with this. Even then, I... Yeah, I'm not sure about the stability. I get it. If they want to do this style, that's what they have to do. But... I don't know. There, there may be some kind of J-hook latching system. Like, put it in a twist and then... But then you need a special blade... So for generic blades to fit, I'm not sure. Sometimes you just have to compromise. So I would say if you get one of these, it's probably not one to go whacking about a much. It does have a D-ring though. It does have a belt clip. It's also a little more complicated to take apart. These are pretty simple. A couple of screws. This one, you slide this plate off. There's a screw. Then this ring comes off. You unscrew this back part. And then under that's a screw. So there's about three or four screws. Luckily, just to charge it, this end piece unscrews by itself and the charging port's there. So charging is easy. But getting to the battery and SD card's a little more complicated. But once you get used to it, it's not bad. And hey, it does make you feel like a Jedi reassembling and mucking about with your lightsaber. But all in all, this is definitely the most complicated one I have. Which unfortunately does open up to some, some more errors, but yeah, it's Obi-Wan's, right? Here's kind of a pretty light blue one. And these just use the RGB spectrum. So you can program the light colors from the font file or change them yourself. I will say this one does have one of the nicest feeling buttons. Although, because this plate has to be removed, you um, can't really fix it in place. But I didn't like how it fit, so 
I actually installed a uh, rivet from an AK because yeah why not I think this is the one that was his uh, now this is the ghost blade which I think is weird I haven't customized this one yet I will yeah this is uh, his disco blade from earlier So, um, yeah, Fox singing. It happened. And someone thought it was worth putting on there, so why not? But I'll probably customize this and just put original trilogy on eventually. But, uh, yeah, that's what I've come up with. Again, for just playing around, this is fine, but the four screw setup I'm not particularly fond of. But what are you going to do? Of course, in universe, the different colors, each lightsaber is kind of stuck on one color because it means something. Blue means guardian, physical, kind of policey. Green means more intellectual, forcey. Red, I don't think I need to explain. Yellow is... Uh, a sentinel, a temple guard, basically. And, of course, purple is for, you know, bad motherfuckers. But we do see some other colors. For example, that light blue. It's kind of normally meant to be clear-headed, level-headed type thing. But a lot of the other colors, like orange, they haven't really been defined now. Like Ahsoka's, that's meant to be uh, a purified one i.e. like a gray Jedi too. But of course with these we can change the swing sounds and color sounds and that means you really only need one or two unless you want to kind of customize them a bit. Whereas if you buy the Hasbro the Black Series, which you know do cost two, three hundred themselves, each one is pretty much stuck on one. A couple of them have two colors. So this just seemed like a better route to go. So far, like I said, I picked up Imperial Workshop and Art Saber, and those have been fine. Those are kind of the Xenopixel, the mid-tier. There's a bit of a back and forth, but truthfully, I've seen just as many Profi ones have glitches and wiring come loose and whatnot. That's just an unfortunate fact when you're dealing with lithium batteries, circuit boards. Things will go wrong, and luckily there are repair services. And if you do things like break your blades... You just buy a replacement, and they cost about what a LED blade you'd expect. And there are all kinds of accessories, like this stand that came with one of them. I think it was the Obi-Wan. They also have these blade plugs, which are actually quite nice. They uh, give you the full effect of a blade without it sticking out, so if you want to test out sounds and swing sounds and all that, and the color hue, it will show you just that. I guess it would also be there to protect your electronic pins from being exposed because a lot of people do do classes and sporting with these hey each to their own I'm just doing it because it seemed interesting and I like electronics and I wanted to see about programming one and it, I find it quite fun I also find it fun to hand them to friends and family and get their reactions it's it's priceless so I'm sure I'll keep making videos on that as uh, time goes on there's a couple more I wouldn't mind picking up, so do later videos, and I might go into more of the lore of individual lightsabers over time, Luke's, Obi-Wan's, Vader's, why not? That's what this whole channel is about. So for me, even though the light is of uh, little use, and the programming, the feel, the sound, I like it. And uh, compared to what programmable sabers were a few years ago five six seven hundred dollars and, and you can still buy those but what i've noticed when you start buying the really high-end ones you don't get you get a slightly nicer speaker you get probably more durable wiring which is good but mostly you get a more authentic replica hilt it seems like a lot of the focus on the high-end ones has to do with the exact details of the hilt for example the bubbles here i think there are six 
six and it should be seven correcting things like that and i get it for people into it hardcore like i say like i am maybe my ak's it would be worth it but for me personally it's just not worth it because you can spend 1500 plus on those and they're still electronics they still will go bad what do you do and i'm just not into it is that this is just a lark for me around christmas but it was a fun lark and i i love learning things and I've learned things. I, again, playing with programming's fun. And, you know, just making friends and family happy. Everyone that I've told laughs and then wants to play with it. So, why not, guys? So, that's my most recent goofiness. We gotta do something, right, folks? As always, if you could, please like, share, subscribe. All that fun, good stuff. Hope everyone's looking forward to Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Uh, happy Life Day. Is it happy? I don't know what the term is. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.